stand with us sing at Calvary. <coughs>
them are present today, although we have a lot of sickness. Appreciate each one that's with us this hour. Uh, the Bible says the sparrows build a nest in God's house and live there. You know, I kind of feel like we've lived at church for the last several weeks. I can tell you that. So, uh, But we appreciate the opportunity to praise the Lord. I want to thank the church for the last two funerals, Miss Betty and also Brother Calvin, for all the people that came and helped and made it possible that we could really honor the Lord Jesus Christ through the time of sickness, sorrow, and death. And the ones we thank you so much that came and uh, shared the sorrow and comfort one another in a time of a great, great need. There's nothing more important that you could have been doing except coming and show your appreciation to one that was lost of loved ones. Had a good number last Wednesday night. Uh, had about 40 head of adults. Come out and be with us on Wednesday night if you can. Also, I'd like to read a letter here. We have a donation to Pleasant Hill Baptist Church in memories of Miss Betty Sapp. And it is $100 donated by Deborah Strickland and family, John Earl Strickland and family, and Diane Strickland. So we thank them very much. We appreciate what they've done to honor Miss Betty. I hope you have your bulletins. There's a lot to be reading. I won't have to go over it, so I hope you have your bulletin. Read what's happening in our bulletins. But things that's not in our bulletins, you can start bringing some candy for our Easter egg and our Easter for the kids. So out in the foyer will be a place if you'd like to pick up some candy and drop it in a box out in our foyer. And also been asked to... Kobe's going to be with the youth, and all the, all the youth are going to meet with him after service, and they're going to have a kind of a cookout and a picnic, and also the young adults and also the teenagers to, to meet with him after service this day. And out on the foyer, there's a list for Vacation Bible School the first week in July, June, and if you'd like to take part in anything, put your name down and check it, or you'd like to take part in a Vacation Bible School and also, Richie Allen, if nothing changes, he'll be with us next Sunday morning. He's supposed to come in this week, so we're looking forward to have Brother Richie uh, from the jungles. Of uh, We appreciate him coming, and we should we share with us the great work that the Lord's doing in that country. Appreciate Dylan and his group of boys who's with him from college. We appreciate having you all with us this morning. And also, Johnny Clark is still in the hospital, and he's still pretty sick, so keep remembering Johnny Clark. He is very, very sick. Uh, so thank you again in the name of Jesus this morning. Huh? Yes, yeah, supper tonight. Don't forget that. And, and also, and, uh, be with us. If anybody's lost a key right out here, it's up here. Anybody lost a key? And don't have to bring sweet stuff tonight or bring Cokes or anything like that to refurnish our Cokes. Ain't that right, Miss Wendy? We don't have to bring no sweet stuff. Just come. Choir practice at 4.30. Choir practice at 4.30. Please try to come.
time we want to do something for somebody here. He's uh, been here a pretty good while. His name is Robert Thornton and today's his birthday. So we're going to sing him happy birthday.
Some of them was real glad to go out, and some of them didn't know where they wanted to go or not. Kind of like a lot of us. Y'all know it? <laughs> some of them are glad to be here, and some of them don't know where to be here or not. <laughs> All right. Thank y'all anyway. I'm telling you, a good day in the Lord, a pretty day, and it said it might rain. But anyway, we'll take it however God sends it. So thank you again today. May God add a blessing upon this congregation this hour. Bless us with the understanding of the Word of God and the Spirit of God today. We thank you so much. This morning, the peace that passes all understanding. In Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 4, the peace that passes all understanding. Do you have that peace that passes all understanding this morning? Do you know for sure? Well, what it's really talking about is having victory in Jesus Christ. Do you live a victorious life? Well, there's a gap between what God says about uh, his word, about how we should live in victory, and what we really know about it in our own life. The Bible says we are complete in him, but yet we feel incomplete in so many ways, do we not? The Bible says we are overcomers, but yet many are overcome. There's a great disconnect some way. Reason why? Well, we just don't understand everything that we should understand. God has provided everything that we need according to his word. If you believe the word of God, he has provided everything. But we have not appropriated what he has provided for us. At the end of it, you should say, you know, really, do you sin as a Christian? <clears throat> Do you sin as a Christian? Because I don't want anybody to say yes because we all know we're guilty. But God says, I have given you everything. Everything that you need to be complete. But no Christian has to sin. No Christian has to sin. But we yield to the fallen nature instead of the spirit of Christ that lives in us and we will fail. We so many times are being overcome. And right in the middle of this, they're trying to teach us about our provision and our appropriation, what we need to do, what God has already given us. Paul, in Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 4, right in the middle of him trying to tell us about victorious living and what we need in Christ and what we have in Christ and how to live this life, Then he goes to an illustration between marriage and divorce. What has that got to do with us victorious living? Well, he's not trying to show marriage and divorce, but using it as an illustration of marriage and divorce. Of the law and love. Every person that's lost is married to Mr. Law. Every person that's lost is married to Mr. Law. When you're saved, you're married to Mr. Love. And he shows us how to change from Mr. Law to Mr. Love. But even when we marry to Mr. Love, we still find out that Mr. Law is still present in our body. We still have a civil war going on with Mr. Law. And he's supposed to be dead. And we married another. But yet that old Mr. Law keeps coming up. And this is what Paul wants us to know and how and what we have because he has already made provisions that we don't have to yield to Mr. Law. But he keeps coming. If Mr. Law is dead, how come he keeps raising up his head? And you know and I know if you've been saved very long exactly what I'm talking about. We don't want to sin, but yet we sin. We don't have to. Sometimes we make it kind of easy when say, well, we know that we're saved and we're going to sin. Well, if I want to sin, I might as well go in and sin and make it easy. But that is not correct with the Word of God. We know that we will because of our fallen nature, but we don't have to sin. Now, in this life that we live, you will never live a sinless life in this flesh and bones and blood that we live. You'll never live a sinless life. 
But what Paul is trying to tell us is that you ought to live and you ought to sin less, not a sinless life. Well, we all agree to that. We ought to sin less. Verse 1 says, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law had dominion over a man as long as he lived, that old law. Then he goes into marriage and divorce. For the woman which have a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he lives. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So that if while her husband lives, she is married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Therefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We need the understanding here today. What you're trying to tell us and what we need to understand. That, Father, you have made all the provisions that we need in this life to be overcomers. Father, you made all the provision we need to never sin again. Father, you made all the provision we need to live this Christian life. But, Father, we so many times we just do not appropriate what you have already given to us to live and to be the people that we ought to be. Help us to understand that we are free as Christians from that law, that law that we cannot do. But, Father, we are free in Christ Jesus, married to Mr. Love, that is Christ our Savior. Amen and amen. Jesus said, if you would come to him, drink of that water, we should never thirst again. Yet, many a Christians are dissatisfied in their life they live in for Christ Jesus, and they own a quest to satisfy their deepest needs without Jesus Christ in pleasures, materialism, sports, gods of this world of all types. And yet God says, I've already made all the provision you need. You don't need these things. But yet many, 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 many Christians don't have time to worship the Lord, the things of God, take their family away from the things of God, and they're at a quest, looking, trying to find a satisfaction outside of the things of God. He says you don't need to do that. The Bible says one thing about us, and our experience says something else about us. What are we going to do? Well, I tell you what a lot of people do. They want to rewrite the Bible. They want to bring the Bible down to the level of their own experience. Do you think you're right and the Bible is wrong? They want to dumb down the Bible. That's the reason we have all these new printed books out to lower the Bible to match our life to delete the things that we don't like to change to add and to take away and it becomes man's word instead of God's word to dumb down the Bible to fit, fit our own experience and our own lifestyle delete dumb the Bible down and reject the Holy Spirit of God is the author of the Word of God. The Holy Spirit of God is the author of the Word of God. Nowadays, the Holy Spirit of God has been set aside because you cannot change the words of the Holy Spirit of God. When you do that, it becomes a man's book, what man says. And we dumb down the Bible. And you will never understand and have peace that passes all understanding away from the Word of God and away from the Spirit of God. If you do not accept the Word of God, you will never understand that the provisions and the appropriation that God has made in the Word of God for each and every one of us today. Provisions, we have not appropriated this. Did not Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary did not Jesus pay for the sins of the whole world? 
Don't the Bible say, not these new books, but the Bible, enough of blood was shed, and some deletes the blood, as y'all know. Enough of blood was shed to save every person that's ever been born or ever will be born to save everybody. Enough of blood was shed. If you read the real book and don't delete the word, it's called blood. 1 John 2 and 2. And he is the appropriation for our sin and not for our sins only, but the sins of the whole world. Now I asked you a very simple question this morning. Jesus paid for the sins of the whole world. Is the whole world saved? Is the whole world going to be saved? No. The appropriation, the blood. For everybody, everybody sitting in here right now, he's already had his blood shed. Jesus paid for the sin. But people have not appropriated what Jesus Christ has done for them. John 3 and 18 he that believed on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only, watch this word, begotten Son of God. That means they have not accepted the provision that Jesus Christ already done 2,000 years ago. If you're lost here this morning, it's not because you've done anything that bad. You've not killed anybody. Or anybody that's lost, but they have not accepted what Jesus Christ has already done for the world. That begotten. Only it's time that the Holy Spirit of God uses that word to Jesus Christ is John 3.16. But you won't find it in some of these dumbed down books. And they have deleted that word, begotten. It says that Jesus Christ, oh well, we know who he is. God gave his only begotten son. But these books that dumbs it down say his only son. But we know exactly what it means. John 1 and 12 says as many have accepted Jesus Christ and him give them power to become the sons of God. How many sons do God have? Are you saved this morning? Are you a son of God? The Bible says if you believe and save, you are the son of God. God has got millions of sons. But yet it says in that dumbed down part of the Bible, in John 3, 16, begotten is left out. Did you know what that does? It says it's only a son. God's got many sons. It says it's only a son. What is it talking about? I'm going to tell you what it means. It is denying the deity of Jesus Christ. It denies the deity of Jesus Christ when you dumb down the Bible and not accept what God says. John 3 and 18. Our sins have been paid for. The condemnation now is not that they have sinned a great sin, but the condemnation is they have not received what Jesus Christ has done for them. They have not believed in the only begotten, the deity of Jesus Christ. They have not believed that. So why is people lost? They have not used what God has already given them. They think they can live good enough and do good enough and be good enough. And I haven't done anything wrong and I'm just as good as anybody sitting here this morning. That is not what God says. God says, I've already give you everything you need. You just won't accept it. You're condemned already because you won't believe what I've already done on Calvary 2,000 years ago. The saved today, do you really know, have not received what Jesus Christ has done for us. Colossians 3 and 3 says, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. You are dead, and your life is hid in Christ. 
Now, in remember in Joshua, when they was moving into the promised land, Joshua chapter 1, verse 3, what God says to Joshua before they ever went over the Jordan River. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given you. I have already given you before you step across Jordan. As I said unto Moses, every step that God has given a child of God, he has already given them. He just says for us to claim it. He has already given those provisions to us. We just don't claim it as Joshua found out. He has already given to the peace that passes all understanding. Do you understand that this morning? It has already been giving unto you. Victory through amazing grace. To to think what God has given you as a child of God this morning. You are a child of God. You are a sons of God regardless of the dumbed down Bibles. You are sons of God. And here is why I said it right in the middle of this. Here it is the Holy Spirit of God. Paul done the penny, but this is the Holy Spirit of God. Tells about marriage and divorce. By how that we can live this Christian life in Christ Jesus and be victorious and quit running up and down the world and trying to find some type of satisfaction without Jesus Christ. Paul talking about this living victorious living then he starts talking about a man and a woman being married death and adultery and you know moves on but he gives an illustration Not just about marriage and divorce, but he gives an illustration of what I'm talking to you about this morning here about being victory in your Christian life and living a victorious Christian life and claiming what Jesus Christ has gave every one of us, that we are sons of God. Sons of God. Many sons of God. This illustration about marriage and what he says about this, the positions that we should possess. This is an object lesson in marriage and divorce by the Holy Spirit of God. Of course, some people don't believe that the Bible was printed and penned by the Holy Spirit of God, just used man's hands. They don't believe that the Holy Spirit of God is the author of the Bible. If they did, they wouldn't believe in changing it by what man does. They don't believe it. But if you believe in what man says and what God says, that's altogether different. So here it is. Now, the Holy Spirit tells us about a woman. Now, she was in love with this man, and he's the perfect man. Ladies, girls, I know that she said, Mo, I tell you, I married a perfect man. That's what Joyce thought. (laughs) Y'all know where I'm coming from. Well, she married a perfect man. Man, every woman wants to marry the perfect man. Is that true? Every girl wants to marry a perfect man. Well, she married this perfect man. Well, she thinks it's so wonderful. Now, I've got Mr. Perfect. Boy, I'm going to tell you what. He never makes mistakes. He does everything right. Everything he says is true. Everything he says is honest. His standards, he holds so high, and he expects me to hold those same standards. He expects me to do everything perfect just like he does. Now, remember, she is married to Mr. Law. Mr. Law is perfect. There's never a flaw on God's law. It is absolutely 100% perfect. And we're all married to Mr. Law under our lost condition. Well, the wife, you know, she found out pretty quick, a little bit harder to do than she thought. Now, he'd say, do this and do that, and don't do this and don't do that, and do you understand? She says, yes, my beloved, I really, really understand. He'd go off to work, come back home, and when he'd come back home, uh, he'd find out she didn't do everything she should have done, and find out she didn't do some things she should have done and done some things the wrong way. Well, you know, he would scold her, you know, and she'd feel bad about it because I'd done some things I ought not to have done. And some things I should have done, I did not do. He scolds her and she said, you know, I can't complain because everything he says I should have done, I should have done. 
and the things he said I shouldn't have done, I shouldn't have done, I cannot complain about because he is perfect and he is right, everything he says. Well, she rededicates her life, tries to turn over a new leaf and do better because she's married to Mr. Perfect. Next day, the same thing. He goes off and comes back and she fails again. Well, you know, she feels a little bit bad about what she's done because she didn't do what she said she was supposed to do. You know what she learned as you and I have learned? That you could not keep all the law. You can't keep the law. You can't satisfy Mr. Law. Did you know God knew that? He knew there was no person that could do that. You see, the law was never intended to save anybody. All through the Old Testament, none of the law was ever to save anybody. It was to show the people they could not keep the law. As this woman soon found out, well, she's got an eye on another man. This other man is Mr. Love. Now, he's righteous. He's holy. Man, he's understanding. She said, I know what I'll do. I will divorce Mr. Law, and I will marry Mr. Love. Then, I won't have to worry about being bound to Mr. Law as my husband. But she finds out she can't divorce Mr. Law because she's bound to him as her husband as long as he lives. Well, I'll wait till he dies. Then I'll be free. She finds out that Mr. Law will never, never, never die. Matthew 5 and 18, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. The law will never change. All the books will change. Many of them will change, but God says my law will never change if you believe the Holy Spirit of God. The Word of God, she's married now and she cannot please Mr. Law and she cannot measure up to Mr. Law and he won't die. She says, well, if he won't die, I'll die. Well, how can a dead woman marry another man? I'll die. Well, Romans 7 and 4 says, Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye may be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. The honest release from Mr. Law is death. You see, when someone dies, the old law has no more pull over us. You're dead to it. Well, whenever Jesus Christ died 2,000 years ago as a child of God, a sons of God, according to the Bible, I died when he died. He appropriated that. When he died, I died. Now, see, there is a death to reckon with. She can't marry Mr. Love. How can a dead woman marry anybody? Well, whenever Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, I was raised with him 2,000 years ago. Now, she was also raised from the dead, as verse 4 I read. Now, you need to learn dying and start living. Now, nobody's ready to die. You've got to learn dying and start living. Illustration about marriage teaches about this victorious Christian life. Reckon yourself to be dead to the law. Law has no more dominion over us whenever we're dead to the law, we're dead to self, we're dead to Satan, and we're dead to sin. Now, there's a deficiency to realize. She's married now to Mr. Love. She's been raised now, now she's free from the law. She died to the law. She's raised again in the newness of life. Now, you see, she's married to Mr. Love. Now, that is Jesus Christ. He is the 
groom, we are the bride. She's married to Jesus Christ. Now she said, oh, this is wonderful. This is so wonderful. He is so sweet, so loving, so wonderful. But she soon finds out that requirements with Mr. Love is greater than the requirements of Mr. Law. Y'all found that out? How is that? This requirements. As you think about this, now she's married to Miss Love. Well, Matthew 5 and 17 says, Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy but fulfill. Well, Mr. Love says, you know, about this matter and Mr. Law, she finds out it's more intense because Mr. Law, you says, you know, go a mile. Mr. Law says, go a mile with your enemies. You know what Mr. Love says? Go two miles. Mr. Law says, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But Mr. Love says, love your enemies and do good those that persecute you. She finds out it's even harder. It's getting worse. Can't please Miss, Mr. Love either. Can't please Mr. Love. Have you found out that you don't do everything you want to do even that you're saved? Now you're married to Mr. Love if you're a child of God here today. Have you found out that you fall and fail many times and you're married to Mr. Love? And really, I thought I have really understood that I sinned more after I was saved than before I was saved because I realize it more now. Something's different now about Mr. Love. And this is what I want you to understand and I want you to grasp this morning. The difference between Mr. Love and Mr. Law. Now, Mr. Love tells her to do things. I want you to make the bed just like this. I want you to cook my dinner just like this. I want you to do this, and I don't want you to do that, and I want you to do this. But what she found out was different between Mr. Love and Mr. Law. Mr. Law told her what to do and what not to do, and he left and went off. Mr. Love says, I want you to make the bed, and he didn't go off. He took her hands and he made that bed with her just like he told her to do. Prepared the meal just like he told her to do with his own hands. And everything that Mr. Love tells you to do, he either does it for you or he does it through you and with you. That's Mr. Love. Everything, any demand that Jesus Christ makes on your life, he does it for you or through you or in you. Every demand, we can't not do it by ourselves. Nobody can live the Christian life in their own strength. It's just whenever we yield to Mr. Love, that he does it through us. And the peace that passes all understanding because he's doing it and not me. He demands it, but also he helps me and even does it himself. Saved. What we need to do. Stop trying and start trusting. Every demand is a demand that he puts the Holy Spirit in charge of you that we might be able to do it. Now, Chapter 7, verse 18 through 25. Law. Paul says. There's about 16 eyes in these verses of scriptures. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. But now to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not. But the evil which I would not that I do. Now if I do that, I, 
Would not, it is no more I that doeth it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight now in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with a mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. We have a civil war going on in our bodies if you're saved. That you ought to do, you don't do. Y'all found that out? that you should not do, that you do. That's what Paul was saying. Because there's another law. That law is like the gravity law. If it weren't for the gravity law, you know what? We would go off into outer space. There's a law called gravity, and it is a constant downward pull upon your life, upon everything that's in this world, that gravity pull. Why do we have this constantly pull? Why, as a child of God, it says we ponder, wonder, Lord, I feel it, to leave the love. Why do we want to leave the love of Jesus Christ? Why are we pulled away from church activity? Why are we pulled away from worshiping Jesus Christ in our local church three times a week is what we have? Why are we pulled away from that? Why are we not here when we should be? Why are we pulled away from the things of God? Because there's another law working in our members. Always a downward pull that pull, pulls us away. Lord, I feel it. And it is a law of sin, the civil war that's in our bodies. We have this. Now, this is talking to the saved person. This law that pulls us. Now, if you're lost, it's not talking to you because you don't have a civil war. You're married to Mr. Law, and there's nothing that you can do about it except accept Jesus Christ. There's a dynamics to receive and Chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walks not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Now that I've come to Christ, what he says, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free. I'm free from the law, from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own Son, the only Son, the begotten Son, the begotten Son, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the rights of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walks not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Oh, Paul says, I got help now. The righteousness of this law, that it might be fulfilled, and not by us, but in us, this law. Moses' law is a standard of perfection, of righteousness. But Paul died to that law, as every one of us did if we're saved, and married Jesus Christ another law by the resurrection of his death. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. How does that law work? An airplane, these big old 747s. I've never been in one, but they hold hundreds of people. Can you imagine the tons? I don't know how much one would weigh, all the luggage. And that thing is going to fly. Tons. Tons and hundreds of tons, but that thing is going to fly. The law of gravity says you can't fly. But there's another law that's going to let it fly. Aerodynamics. They turn those engines on. And the law of gravity is still holding it down. But that law of aerodynamics begins to pick up. And the wind over those wings. And that law of aerodynamics. And that plane begins to lift off. It overcomes that downward pull continuously. Now although that airplane is in the air. There's still a downward pull of gravity. When the aerodynamic stops while that plane is in the air, what happens? A crash. We have that law of gravity, a downward pull on you and me continuously to overcome 
this gravity, we have another law. And that's the law of the Spirit of God. To the sons of God. To have power over that downward pull of gravity. That we don't have to do the law any longer because we're married to Mr. Love. That law of Mr. Love. The Spirit overcomes that law of sin and death. 7, 13 and 17. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid, but sin that might appear sin worketh death in me that which is good that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is, is spiritual, but I am carnal, soul under sin. For that which I do I allow not, for what I would that I do not, but what I hate that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now then, it is no more I that doeth it, but sin that dwelleth in me. We have that great battle going on in every one of us. Have you ever got to the point that you sin and you say, God, I don't never want to sin again? Have you ever got to a point that you don't never want to sin again? But you got that downward pull of that gravity, that old nature. You know what you'll do? A lot of times we'll yield to that. Instead of yielding to the Spirit of God. That war goes on. There's a, dif a, a discipline to remember. That other law that works in you. Romans 8 and 9. But ye are not in the flesh but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God that dwells in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ. He is none of his. You know what that means? If you sit here this morning and you do not have the Spirit of God in you, you are a lost person. You are lost. I don't care if you're a church member. I don't care if you're from here from Pleasant Hill, been baptized three times. If you don't have the Spirit of God in you, you are a lost person. And the only law you have is a law that will condemn you because you can't keep it. If you don't have the other law of the Spirit of God, which is Jesus Christ, you will never make it, and you'll never live a victorious life. And when we yield to this old law, it will bring you and take you away from the things of God. You won't care anything about worship. It won't mean nothing to you whatsoever. Because your mindset is that law, and you want to find pleasures and satisfaction in anything but Jesus Christ. So therefore you cannot understand the peace that passes all understanding because you are yielding to that old law, that law of the nature of sin and death. And only when we yield to the spirit of Jesus Christ that we can overcome that gravity pull that keeps everyone else pulling us down and pulling us down and pulling us down. And the older you get, the more that you'll understand the gravity pull on your body. In the gravity pull, but you have that same pull on your spirit that pulls you down and pulls you down and pulls you down. Paul said, Oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from this death? It's going to be with you until you take your last breath. But oh, thank God for the Spirit of God that I don't have to yield and you don't have to yield to that old falling nature. You can worship the Lord Jesus Christ. You can say, Lord, I am so satisfied with you. I don't have to look to these things of this world to satisfy me. I am satisfied in Christ Jesus. How many of you here today is completely satisfied in the Lord like he said we ought to be? How many of you are satisfied of worshiping and serving Jesus Christ at his local church and letting God be on the throne of your life and be the Lord. How many of you are really, really satisfied as he says we ought to be? What we say that we are and what the Word of God says we are, we find out there's a war going on. Now, if you lost here this morning and you want to be saved, you know what you have to do? You have to divorce that old man called law. How do you do that? You die yourself. 
and you die in Christ Jesus. When you accept Jesus Christ, you die in Christ Jesus, and you're also resurrected in Christ Jesus. You see, it's not Christ Jesus' sinless life, and he walked on this earth, he never sinned. He could not have sinned, because the liberals will tell you he could, but he just didn't. That's the liberals, and we got plenty of them in our Southern Baptist. But Jesus Christ could not have sinned because he is deity. Take the begotten out of the Bible, and it takes away from the deity. It takes away from Jesus Christ. But you're not saved how that Jesus Christ walked on this earth and was sinless. But you're saved of that resurrection life that he rose from the grave because he was sinless, and death could not hold him, and death cannot hold you. God said, I put it all out for you. Thank you, Lord, for the understanding of the Spirit of God. Accept it or reject it. He's put it forth before you. Accept the Word of God or reject the Word of God. But the Holy Spirit penned the Word of God. And He is the author of the Bible and not man. As we come now with a song of invitation. If you want to be saved this morning, you can be. It's so simple. You know, it says this, come just like you are. You want to get rid of that old law? Have that new law of love? You just need to come. Come and accept Jesus Christ. Then you will find out a lot of times, boy, people think sometimes, boy, I'm saved now, I got it made. Boy, I'm saved now, I got it made. You will find out a lot of times that you will be in more intense war after you're saved than you was before that you were saved. Because you come aware of the sin that's in your life. As we stand and sing this song, God spoke to your heart, won't you come? Jesus, keep me near the cross. Who are you married to this morning? Mr. Law or Mr. Love? speak to you this morning in his holy word that he penned not man God bless you. Thank you here. Don't forget tonight, sing, bring some Cokes for refreshments, uh, breakfast, supper. Hope they fry and scramble the right eggs, don't y'all? <laughs> Anything else we need to mention? Don't forget to meet with Brother Kobe after the service right now. Right here. Brother Wayne Carter, you mind giving us a benediction?